Good day to you once again. Shall we pray before we bring today's broadcast to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Please join me. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael. Another beautiful day. You spared our life to see it. We honor you, we glorify you. Father, accept our thanks. This time, the next few minutes, your word will be proceeding out to the heart of your children. Father, open the eyes of the heart of your children to be receptive of this word which shall go into them. Sanctify this mouth that shall speak your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. I welcome you to Christ Hope Ministries broadcast. Today's ministration is based and is titled on He is still on time. He is still on time. And I'm taking my reading from the book of John. Chapter 11 is a long chapter, but the main thing is to do with Christ raising up Lazarus from death. He is still on time. What happened was Martha and Mary went to our Lord Jesus Christ and told them, saying that the one he loves is sick. The one whom you love is sick. And Jesus, hearing that, told his disciples, instead of following matter Oh, he told them, let us first of all go to Judea. So, he did not follow Martha home, he went to Judea. Before our Lord Jesus Christ came down, in fact, Lazarus was dead. And the Bible records that he did not go there until after four days. <laughs> I want you to know that God, God's time is always the best. The way you think, the way I think, is different from the way our Lord Jesus Christ thinks. Isaiah 55 a says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, are my ways, saith the Lord. This is another doctrine of sovereignty. It shows the sovereignty of God. He is on science. He is all knowing God. He wants to do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. You cannot dictate to him when he will do it. I tell you, whenever he does it, he is always on time. He does not work according to our, mean, our time in minutes, seconds, hours, day, months. No. A day before the Lord is a thousand years to we human beings. The story of Lazarus is a point in question. How can someone loved 
by Jesus Christ, the sick talk more of being dead. God is great. God is great. Someone loved was said to, to be sick, but we find out that he was dead. But Christ said he was sleeping and not dead. He told his disciples that Lazarus was sick, was sleeping, not even dead, when they have written him off. <clears throat> he is a great God. I want you to know that. <clears throat> they thought Jesus had ignored them. He had ignored their concern. So, Lazarus was dead. They buried him. He did not show up. The third day, even the third day, because even the third day, they believed that Lazarus can still be, could still be raising up from dead. But my Lord came on time. Jesus did not show up until the fourth day after Lazarus was dead. What? An extraordinary man we do extraordinary thing. A mysterious man we do a extraordinary mysterious thing. It has never been heard before that someone who is dead after is woken up after four days. The one they knew of is when someone is sick, three, four days, and three days, it will, yes. But four days, no, they have not seen it. It has never happened that someone was brought back on the fourth day. So to them, Lazarus was a goner, and Jesus could not and did not come to their rescue they buried him and started to mourn. But Jesus told his, Lazar his disciples that Lazarus was sleeping. In fact, they did not understand him. They all thought, ah, can someone, they said he's dead, he's dead, he's sleeping. <laughs> but Christ said he was sleeping. Because at the right time, they found out that he was just sleeping and could not respond to them. When the heavenly man comes to them, to him, he will wake up from his sleep. It is only him who could have said that. Christ, as a man, we read in the same book, John chapter 11, that he wept. That shows Christ in his human form. That he feels the way we feel. He, like men, like we human beings. And the Bible recorded it. That he wept. He had a deep grief in his heart. This shows him in his human emotion. The incident recorded by John shows that the shows the full humanity of God, of Christ, as well as his deity. While on the fourth day that Lazarus died, Christ went to his house, found them that they were mourning. What did Christ do? He only said to God that Lazarus come out. He only gave that command. And when Christ cried out, Lazarus, come out, he came out immediately. And he said, Loose him, let him go. That's his letter words. 
Lose him and let him go is very, very significant. They lose him. Christ did not touch him. So all the dead things that was in him, he gave a command that they should lose him. He should be brought up away from him. So you, my brothers and my sisters, listen to this word. What the word has put on you, the load they put on you, the burden they put on you, the cloak of shame they put on you, Christ is saying that it should be removed. I tell you, and I say that by the grace of God, what they have put on you will be removed. The garment of shame, the garment of death, they have put on you will be removed. You have been written off. The, I want you to know the story of Lazarus. It tells me, and I want you to even understand that even the, the word said, a dead hen cannot eat meat a hawkorn again. The story of Lazarus tells me and makes me believe that even though I have been written off, even though you have been written off, they are still alive. Not until Christ says, that is your hand. When he says there is life in you, nobody can take it away from you. When he says you are sleeping, nobody can say you are dead. Because of Christ, you are still alive. He is a God of the living. God of Abraham. God of Isaac. God of Jacob. He never dies. Is a living God. All the dead things in your body, I command them in the name of Jesus to hear the words of God and come back to life. The dead bone in your body, I command it in the name of Jesus to come back to life. You are about to go to the hospital to go for operation. And even the doctor does not, the doctors, your doctors, all the surgeons, they are saying that it is over for you. I am telling you, Christ says there is life for you. Not until Christ says it is over for you, nobody can write you off. When Christ says you are a man, you no more can say you are, say you are a boy. When he says you are alive, Nobody can say you are dead. Christ did not touch Lazarus. He only speak the word. And I pray in the name of Jesus. He said the word is in our mouth. We just ask to speak it. I speak life into your life today. I speak the word of God into your life. Whatever is damaged. Whatever is broken in your life. Hear the word of God this present moment. Come back to life in the name of Jesus. Is it high blood pressure? Is it arthritis? Is it cancer of the lung? The cancer of the womb? Cancer of the, uh, 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 of the head? Cancer in all your body? I pray in the name of Jesus. That cancer will be removed in the name of Jesus. The Lord who brought Lazarus back to life. We give you back your health because he says he's going to satisfy us with good health. Do you think it is too late? My Lord says it's not late. He is still on time. Have you been praying all this while? You have not received that healing. Today, healing has come to your home in the name of Jesus. Receive this word with faith. Don't say with this man shouting in my home. Christ is speaking to you today. Hear the word of God. He is saying there is life for you. Lazarus was dead, was a dead person to human being. But Christ is saying there is life in you today. You are not a goner until you are dead. Martha and Mary said 
Lazarus was dead. Your brothers, your sisters, your husband, your wife, is tell your friends, they are telling you you are dead. They are like your doctors are saying that you are dead. You are a goner. I bring good tidings to you. Jesus Christ is ready to heal you if only you believe. Just say, I believe you, Jesus Christ. You can heal me. I believe you can bring me back to life. It will bring you, bring you back to life. The leper had been going their ways, all this, or their business begging. But when Christ came to their life, it, it bring, gave them back life. They said, Jesus of Nazareth, son of David, heal us. He healed them. You must have patience. According to the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, it will renew your, you. It will bring you back to life. Whatever that has been taken away from you, Christ will bring it back. He will give you your life. You must just have to be patient. I want, I, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 41, says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and hear my cry. I pronounce today the Lord will hear your cry. Wait unto him. He will listen to you. He will hear your cry. The Israelites, they were in Egypt for, more, for about 430 years. They cried to God. They prayed to God. Not until he, he molded Moses, who was going to be their savior, to come go and rescue them. Not until then, he heard their prayers and he rescued them. He was able to rescue them on time. Because he, Christ is never late. God is never late. He rescued them as he raised up Lazarus. He rescued them. He is ready to rescue you today. Joseph thought the uh, sheep butler has forgotten him in prison. But when God's time comes, he was remembered. And he was brought from prison to be the prime minister. Your time is not gone. Your time is now. Christ, he has the, your time in, in his hand. He is never late. He is always on time. Brother and sister, he is on time. God promised Abraham. Abraham thought he was going to help God. He, he had Agai, uh, through, through Agai, he had Ishmael. But that was not the promise of God for him. When the time comes, he came on time. And he gave him Isaac at his old age, at the age of 99, because my Lord is on time. He is never too late. Mordecai, in the book of Esther, the book of remembrance was opened when God's time comes. He has forgotten what he did for the king. But when on the on the right at the right time, on God's time, the king remembered him. I say and I pronounce, if you think you have been forgotten, you are not forgotten. You are in the palm of God. He still remembers you. His time is the time he will do it, not your own time. He is never late. He is always on time. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for this hour, for this minute, your children have listened to your, your word, that you are always on time. You are never late. I pray you give your, those who are hearing your word today that patience, that perseverance to wait on your time because you are never late. And when your time shall come, it shall be the most convenient time for your children. Thank you, Lord, for this day. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. God bless you as you listen. In Jesus' name I pray. Remain blessed in Jesus. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name.